I've been asked to take a look at this Sega Mega Drive 2. Apparently it's got some sound issues. And the issues are the 8-bit sound, apparently. I'm not entirely sure how it works, but I'm guessing there's a chip in here that's responsible for the 16-bit sounds, and there's one responsible for the 8-bit sounds, and it uses both of them in the gameplay to generate sounds? What's that? Yeah, I, I think people will, will understand. Yeah I, I, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. So, in my expert opinion, there's a problem. <laughs> there's a problem with the 8-bit chip. Now, I don't know which one the 8-bit chip is. This has got a mod on it, by the way. There's a... Uh, um, who's that? M Maroni? Somebody's modified it. And he's put some lovely little switches on to do this. Hmm. I think it's 50 hertz, 60 hertz, Japanese and European, I guess. So I'm curious to see what the mod looks like in this, but let's just see if we can demonstrate the issue. And this is the power supply that I was given with it, and I ain't plugging that in until I've done something with that. I don't know whether you can see it, but it's mm, it's not great. Because it's got this jack at the end, it's impossible to get some heat shrink tubing over this. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to trim this back so that I can get heat shrink tubing over it and round to here so I can cover that. And then I'm going to put another piece over here so you, you won't even be able to tell that that's been modified. All right, let's attack this with a knife. Fun. All right, I'll tidy that up in a bit, but let's see if we can get some heat shrink tubing over it now. There we go. Let's see if we can shrink that down. And let's put a piece on here as well. That should do. Good as new. Right, so there we go, it's much safer now. The heat shrink is covering the end of the plug. You can't see any any exposed wires. And then we've got this lovely little jack at the end. Right, now let's plug it in. Let's just get rid of all this mess first. Nice. Let's put this ever drive in. Where can I put this? Not like that, Steve. Right, let's power it on. I've got this set to 50 hertz, so you'll uh, you'll be able to enjoy the the music that's too slow. Too slow music. Too too slow music. The music is too slow. Right here we go. Right, so straight away there, there's no jump sound. The bells work, but there's no jumping sound, is there? It does appear to be mainly the jumping sound, but it's a sound that should be there. This has got some uh, Master System games on, so let's choose one of those. And in theory, it should have any sound on it at all, should it? Let's do Sonic the Hedgehog. Why not? Yeah. Can't hear anything. I don't believe I've ever played this on the Master System. Ooh, it looks awful. Yeah, no sound at all. So, I think that demonstrates the problem. Let's try and fix it. Ooh, is that some kind of warranty? <laughs> I like it. Well, let's void that, shall we? Oh no! It actually is, it says void! Is this for is this the person who did the mod? Hmm. I really want to see what's in here now. But I guess before I do that, we should uh, ask voiceover Steve to shout out the Holy Hand Grenade patrons. I'm not doing it. What? What's that? I said I'm not doing it. Why not? Well, last time you didn't say thanks, and you were, to be honest, quite rude. Oh. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Right. Well, in that case, I suppose I better do it myself. So, this week's Holy Hand Grenade patrons are Tidder, Ellis Garbutt, Jamrag Berlin, Markovitz19, 60 Does Stuff, and Western and Sons. Have I missed one help? 
Yeah, Mr. Oz Newton and one jockey, so apologies. That's why I get voiceover Steve to do it. He is much better at it than me. Oh no, it's void. All right. Oh, 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 we've got some tape and lots of little wires going everywhere. What's under the tape? Let's find out. Just be careful I don't undo any of this work because I don't really understand it. Right, well, I think that tape was just taping down this wire. Right, there we go. Everything's still attached, isn't it? I think I might take a picture of this, just in case I do dislodge anything. So, in theory, I'm not interested in any of that anyway, because I'm pretty sure that the sound isn't going to be generated from this chip. I mean, I don't know. Oh. Which chip is it generated from? I think I better find out. Right, I'll just put it under microscope. I'm just having a, a nosy around. And... There's some signs of corrosion, like there. Uh, it's just generally a bit manky, the board. I wonder whether it might be a capacitor issue, but they all actually look okay. And they are Rubicon ones, which I believe are supposed to be good. But let's just try cleaning that area up there. That looks like the worst of it. Yeah, I mean, it's not great, is it? But I'm not sure it's gone through any traces or anything. Maybe that one. It's worth checking. Let's check it on continuity. Continuity. Let's see if it's going from there to there. Yeah. I mean, that via there, is that, I mean, if that goes through to somewhere important on the other side, I don't think it's going to be. Yeah, we've got gunk inside there. I'm not having much luck with uh, corrosion, am I, these days? I'm going to try and take this board out and have a look on the other side, I think. Right, so the other side of the board is lovely and clean. Uh, I can't see any problems with that at all. This via is here, so it comes up. It's one of these here, and they all look absolutely fine, but I'll just make sure that it is going through from one side to the other. Because if it's not, I mean, maybe that is the problem. No, it's fine. So I don't think it's that. Let's have another look over this board. Let's start in the top corner. I mean, it's, it's dirty, but... That all looks fine, doesn't it? I mean, I wonder if it's something to do with the mod. I, I don't know the history of this, so... It's possible that when the mod was done, that... You know, it's... It's not been done properly, and it's... Stopped the 8-bit sound from working. I, I don't know. I mean, just because these capacitors aren't bulging doesn't mean that they've not dried out, does it? It is very possible. I wonder if that's a good place to start, maybe... Oh! Hmm... Has that been deliberately done? I don't know whether it's cut through or not. No, it's still going there. Okay. Right, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to recap this. There's a lot of caps. In fact, do you know what I'm going to do? Because it is working. It's, it is just the sound, isn't it? So I'm going to look on my donor board here, and I'm going to try and trace where the... See if I can get the pin out for this DIN connector, and trace where this, the sound traces go. And then that might give me an idea. I mean, if it comes up, it might might be this banking capacitors here. It could be these here. It could be these all the way down here. I don't know. But if I f follow it, then that might help. Right, so I found the pin out for the connector at the back and it's 8 and 9 which is the stereo left and right so that's this one and this one and I've followed them round and they do a little bit of a through the board jobby but they come up they come up at these two capacitors which is CE31 and CE32 and then from there they both travel into this little chip here now, I'm not convinced it is these capacitors because we are getting some sound, it's just not all the sound. Right, let's take those two off and let's test them in the component tester and see how they read on there. Right, well that's one out, let's test that. Okay, so it's reading as a 10 microfarad. 
ESR 1.4. I don't know if that's good enough. Try the other one. 9856 nanofarad ESR 1. So it is reading different than the other one. Well, let's pop two new ones in. Let's see what it does. Because I don't know how to read this thing anyway. Right, let's try that. Okay, let's turn it on. Right, no, it's still got no sound. Right, so I don't think it's that. Let's let's have a closer look at this board now. Maybe I could swap that chip out for one on my donor board. There definitely is those chips on there. Let me just Google that chip just to see what it is. Right, it's a BA10324AF, which is uh an amplifier basically and there's two of those on there i wonder whether it's either well they both go into this chip i wonder if they both go into this chip as well maybe one of these is 8-bit one's 16-bit don't know as usual i'm just making it up as i go along i don't know much but i know i love you do you know what let's do it I'm going to take them off my donor board first. Let's let it cool down, we'll test it. Still not making the jump in sound. Right, well that didn't do anything. So it's obviously nothing to do with those amplifiers. I was changed both of them and it's still got the same issue. I'm going to take a punt that it's going to come from maybe this main ASIC or I don't know. It's, it's, in, it's going to be integrated somewhere, but I just don't know where. All right, many hours have passed. I've been looking at the pinout for the main ASIC, the 3155660 chip, which is this bad boy right here. And this section here is sound. So we've got 55, 56, and 57. We've got left and right, analog, etc., etc. I've checked on the board, and those are going where they need to go. I've checked the capacitors. I've checked various things everything seems fine but i have found something so i'll cut to the chase this area here 177 178 179 is on the other side of the asic we've got two sounds one of them is a ground and we've got this one in the middle which is psg now i don't really know what psg stands for it says an long but it's, it's pin 178 of the asic 177 is this one here 179 is this one, which is ground, and then 178 is this one here, and it goes round here, round, 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 to this via here. And from this via, it travels all the way over here to, guess where? 
this area. Specifically, this via here. I've checked it on my donor board, and it does indeed travel to there, and then from there into this resistor, and it ends up here at this capacitor. Now on this board, the, the faulty board, is not doing that, and that, I'm guessing, is because of this. So I'm going to clean this up, I'm going to scrape a bit away, and let's see what we're left with. And it's still hard to tell. As far as what I should do, let me continuity check, let me show you. Put my probe in this one here, and then it should come up there, but it's not. And I'll just show you that on the donor board, from that via there, to this via here. There you go, it's coming up. Just looks like rust, doesn't it? Right, so that is traveling to there, but it's not getting to there because there's a little break there. So it's there, but not there. So I think what I'm probably going to have to do, I can run it from here. I just need to run a jumper, run it from there to there. It looks like there is. Oh, okay, so with the getting rid of the rust, there is still actual metal underneath by the looks of it. I mean, I'm not saying this is going to fix it, because it might not be, but it's definitely not right, is it? Yeah, so we've got copper there, and we've got copper there, and we've got nothing in between. So just a jumper from there to there will we'll do the job. Let's do that. Let's now see if we've got continuity from here to here. <laughs> yes! I'm kind of hopeful now. Nice. Right, let's put this back together now and let's see if it works. Right, here we go. Let's test it. It still comes on. That's a good start. Let's test it with Sonic the Hedgehog again. And if he makes a noise when he jumps, then we know that we're on to a winner. Fingers and toes crossed, everybody. Here we go. Yes! It makes the noise! Get in there! Right, let's try the Master System game. No way! Come on! Love it. Oh wow, I don't think I've ever played this on the Master System. Did I say that before? I don't know. Boing! It's so slow. Whee! Still a stupid game. <laughs> Whatever tomorrow brings, I'll be there with open arms and open eyes. Yeah. Whatever tomorrow.